I kind of wanted to just check my privilege and I wanted to do that online because it's so easy to like be performative and like be presenting as this like woke figure or whatever um and to really like not own up to the fact that you still have a lot of work to do and I think especially in the last few weeks I realized how much work I have to do and in realizing all this stuff about how as an Arab woman like I'm not fully part of the problem but I'm not fully like outside of the problem we're all participating in a system and this is this is me trying to like check my own privilege in the grand scheme of things hi guys welcome back to the internet past three months in lockdown but especially the last few weeks um have been really rough and not just on me but on everybody and i think it comes from a real place of privilege that i can only really feel like repercussions in terms of my mental health and can take care of myself by like stepping back from social media and that's like that's the extent of the impact of this global social economic crisis that we're collectively going through so um as much as it i've just been exhausted and i've just felt like i really need to take time off um and i also felt like I needed just to take time to think and collect my thoughts and they're nowhere near collected <laughs> but I also just didn't want to like sit in silence I guess for much longer um so yeah I just wanted to say a few things in response to the Black Lives Matter protests happening and in response to the global pandemic that is still very much going on um, I kind of wanted to just check my privilege and I wanted to do that online because it's so easy to like be performative and like be presenting as this like woke figure or whatever um, and to really like not own up to the fact that you still have a lot of work to do and I think especially in the last few weeks I realized how much work I have to do because I was spending the first couple of months in lockdown with my parents and we are incredibly privileged um, in the context of the UK but also in the global context like me not being a British citizen or really a citizen of any functioning democracy but still having the safety of living in a country that is free from warfare so I was kind of yeah sheltered from the reality of what this crisis has really meant for a lot of people, which is, you know, financial instability, um, serious risk to their health, all the essential workers that are out there that are still doing the work, that are still keeping the world running, um, that are keeping the billionaires rich. I'm completely disconnected from, from that reality. And as much as I'm not a white person, so I don't really feel like guilt about the kind of systemic racism that prevails in the US and in the UK and around the world. I am an Arab woman who comes from Egypt, who comes from a majority ethnic background of Arab people, brown Arab people in Egypt who have a racist society, who do have um, inherited racism from our colonial past and who have a lot of other problems like the political problems the human rights problems in egypt are tremendous um the other day i heard about uh sara hagezi who is um who was an egyptian activist decided to end her life because she was arrested and tortured and raped in prison for carrying a rainbow flag out at a concert and the fact that someone can still be arrested and tortured and just treated so horribly just for carrying a rainbow flag like just for just being open about the fact that they think that anyone should be able to love anybody and that that happened in my country like in Egypt 
really like got to me and I just I mean it's pride month it's June it's pride month and black trans women in the UK and in the US have an average life expectancy of 35 years domestic abuse that's because of lack of recognition and their rights like the, just the justice system, the, 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 just the systems that we have in place are so discriminatory. And I guess I've just been really overwhelmed by just the, the, number, of, the number of issues that have come to light and, and the studies showing how Black, Asian, and Middle Eastern people are more likely um, to be affected and are are much bigger percentage of the... COVID-19 deaths than they are of the population. There's like a just disproportionate number of people who are not white and who are not, you know, cis and who are not neurotypical and who are not heterosexual and who are not just within fit in this like mold of normal who are just constantly like disadvantaged and who are just constantly struggling to 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 have the same rights as as white people as white cis hetero middle class people and um i don't know i mean i i think i've i've been a bit i think there are a lot of things going on in my head right now but like one of them is um i'm trying to be compassionate with myself because i I know that I come from a background of oppression on a just national level, like in Egypt, protest and my understanding of protest, having lived through the 2011 revolution, having lived through the 2013 revolution and um, my my concept, my self-concept of protest is violent and is, is Trump, is, is just it, it's all i've i've been conditioned by those experiences and by the patriarchal society that i come from and by just like all the media that i've consumed to believe that my voice isn't worth using and also that even if it is worth using it's very very dangerous to use and I want to change that like I obviously want to make a change in my life I want I feel mobilized to to do something about these issues that I care about and I feel like I am in a very privileged position to be able to use my voice although I'm not you know a citizen of a functioning democracy I am an educated woman with an audience and a a voice and an able body and an able mind and and so many i've just got so much privilege that i just want to use it i just want to use it for good but i yeah i guess i don't i don't really <laughs> understand the political landscape as much as i would like to understand it um i don't understand experiences that aren't my own um and i i think i have a lot of work to do in that in that sense and obviously like this whole this whole thing was sparked by or like this global awakening really was was sparked by the death of George Floyd but there were so many other people there were so many other black people and so many other middle eastern people and so many other african people and so many other just injustices that have happened that we don't hear about we don't talk about we don't react to we don't learn about we don't help fund change in response to so one thing i wanted to mention on the education um wavelength uh is a really amazing non not-for-profit organization in the uk that is campaigning to mandate black history education it's called the black curriculum i'll leave a link in the description to their website i would really appreciate it if you could like donate to them or um use their template and email your local officials if you are based in the uk and 
educate yourselves on black education but also like try to get your governments to mandate it because yeah black history is just it's just a history of erasure really um i had a really interesting discussion really like heartbreaking but ultimately insightful discussion with one of my best friends hannah who lives in egypt right now and she was so so upset and so like taken aback by how like it's just it seems like yeah you know obviously 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 black lives matter like obviously they should matter and the government should it's just the systems in place should should treat them like they matter and this movement is is important of course but at the same time there's still palestinians dying at the knees of israeli soldiers exactly the same way that george floyd died and there are hundreds of them thousands of them millions of them over the last like countless years at this point of occupation and it just seems like people aren't rallying because people don't really care about palestinian lives because palestinian lives don't matter in the grand scheme of things in in the western culture there's just and i read this um article on russia russia today about how like all these labor politicians were like taking a knee for george floyd but then still supporting like policies like to bomb syria in 2015 or to fund dictatorships that are ultimately racist that are you know funding slavery funding human rights violations left right and center but here and now in this modern day in this age in this year during this crisis like black lives matter and it's and it's trendy to say black lives matter and it's important to say that like even if it's just trendy and performative it's still like having a positive effect but the fact that all of these other lives are still like discarded it's yeah it's been an emotional wreck for me the past like month i guess and so i'm gonna just end the video i guess on a positive note i don't know i'm gonna recommend you some books these are the books that i want to be reading um these are obviously this is not a comprehensive list and it also it doesn't cover like all the issues that i want to understand but like this is these are this is my political awakening and in realizing all this stuff about how as an arab woman like i'm not fully part of the problem but i'm not fully like outside of the problem we're all participating in a system and this is this is me trying to like check my own privilege um in the grand scheme of things there are so many more books that i could recommend to you i might leave more in the description i'm definitely going to leave more resources in the description but like the message i guess of this video or of my channel i hope is like is educate yourselves read and riot there's a great book called read and riot that i would recommend as well on top of these books you know like understand your inherent biases there's a great book called biased i would recommend um understand the history of your country not just of like the US or the UK at the moment um, me and my family are in the process of trying to become citizens of the UK trying to gain those those rights that should be fundamental to every human being no matter where you're born on this earth you know whether you're cis or trans whether you're black or white or in the middle like me like whatever it is like we should all have fundamental rights anyway the point is I am currently trying to understand the political situation of the UK, but I encourage you to understand the political situation of your country um, and try to affect change on a local level. I think as well, like I've really been out of tune with like where I am and like, you know, being online and seeing, reading news from all over the world. It can really be very overwhelming and I can find myself like trying to, make change in all of these different ways um with my platform that that doesn't really like isn't confined behind a specific border but there are like physical limitations geographical limitations and if i can like help my local community and if everyone can just help their local community 
while trying to understand the bigger problems on a national level and on a global level like i think we'd all be in a better world so this is yeah this is just disclaimer not a full comprehensive reading list this is just these are a few books that i found recently that i really want to read um the first one is i found this one actually ages ago um last year uh, it's called Are Women on the Ground? Arab Women Reporting from the Arab World. This is edited by Zahra Hankir. And yeah, it's 19 Arab women journalists speaking out about what it's like to report on their changing homelands in this first of its kind essay collection with a foreword by CNN chief international correspondent Christiane Amanpour. Obviously, journalism and activism are like some of the most dangerous things you could be doing and some of the most important things you can be doing in the Middle East today. So I would just really like to understand that more um, and to hopefully discover some really awesome um, feminist women uh, that come from backgrounds similar to mine and come from backgrounds that aren't similar to mine like there's so many so many so many different issues that the Middle East has to like come to terms with and work towards change within so um, so this sounds fascinating and I really want to read it um in order to understand some of the more like uk based issues which is another series of essays this is the good immigrant um edited by nikesh shukla and it's just got a bunch of quotes on how incredible of a book it is and i've heard about it for quite a while um and it's basically 21 writers exploring what it means to be black asian and minority ethnic in britain today so that sounds right up my alley i would love to explore the various different immigrant experiences in the uk because my immigrant experience is just one of many many different types of experiences um these are two books that come from kind of the same series it seems or at the very least they have the same like font so i've assumed they're from the same series but it seems now like they're actually published by different publishers they look like super similar anyway this one is brave new worlds the power of writing now um which is edited by shushela nasta and it is 15 authors exploring the power of the written words and the value of literature in our lives each explores the crucial place of the writer, past and present. Their work articulates the brave new words at the heart of the battles against limitations on fundamental rights of citizenship, the closure of national borders, fake news, and an increasing reluctance to engage with critical democratic debate. Um, of all the books, like this one's like the most probably up my alley, just because I obviously have a vested interest in literature, the publishing industry, and the topics that it discusses in reference to literature. So I really want to read this one. Um, and there is a really great um, essay in here, um, or a couple that talk specifically about what it means to be a Black British woman writer, and also what it means to be um, like a writer doing something political um using your voice in a political landscape and in a digital landscape so i'm um, super interested in reading this one um and the other one that I, again i thought it was i thought this was from the same series but i'm kind of questioning that now this one is called common people um, edited by kit dewall and it's an anthology of working class writers so i don't come from a working class family i come from a middle class family and um this is just a variety of things it's essays poems memoirs uh, and stories written in celebration not apology um they are narratives rich in barbed humor reflecting the depth and texture of working class life the joy and sorrow and solidarity and the differences the everyday wisdom and poetry of the woman at the bus stop the waiter and the hairdresser um, and these are all of the writers that are included in the collection. And again, this sounds like something that I really need to confront. I think I need to confront my financial privilege and um, like my social class is, is definitely like in the realm of, you know, let's not talk about class. I think that's like the first essay in here. Um, or like the third essay in here is called don't mention class and it's like super interesting especially in reference to the uk again which is very classist and very yeah tends tends to prefer not to talk about difficult things rather than talk about them so um super excited to read this one um and finally again from 
Britain's youth, and these are all sort of essay collections. I haven't really mentioned poetry or fiction because I do a poetry reading series and um, I'm not a huge fiction reader, or if I do, like I'll, I'll wrap up any fiction reads that I, that I do. I just wanted to recommend some nonfiction to you guys today um, and just let you know what is on my personal reading list. And obviously, I feel like I shouldn't need to mention this, but support your local bookshops. Bookshops and the publishing industry are kind of in crisis at the moment, um, and they've had to reopen recently, um, which is very exciting, but also, yeah, be safe and, and maybe consider ordering online, but from your local bookshop um, and support your local bookshops. Yeah, and this is, yeah, the last one is called Rife, 21 Stories from Britain's Youth, edited by Nikesh Shukla and Sammy Jones. So this is, um, yeah, like it says, 21 Stories from Britain's Youth. I thought this would be a super interesting read because... Well, it says on the back, it's never been harder to be a young person in Britain. One in four people under 25 are affected by mental illness. Over half of people under 25 have looked for advice on homelessness. University fees are rising. Job opportunities are drying up. Buying a house is out of reach for all but a privileged few. And this generation is noticeably absent from the opinion columns, comment pieces, and news reports of the mainstream media. Rife is here to change that with 21 powerful and passionate essays from writers under the age of 24. Essays on money, mental health, sex, gender, equality, education, crime, and the future. So this also seems super interesting. So those are sort of some books that I am going to be trying to get through in the coming days, weeks, months, years. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through them, but obviously there's so many things we can be doing. We can be educating ourselves. We can be engaging in our local communities we can be donating our money if we have it we can be donating our time and attention to like you know these causes but also just asking the people in your life like are they doing okay and how you can help them if they're not um having difficult conversations is another thing i've been doing um but yeah um i don't know i feel like there there it's just gonna be very overwhelming like i felt like there's so many issues and i think Last year, it was really great to see so many people like get on board with like the climate crisis and really fight for climate change and um, or not fight for climate change, but like against climate change or trying to like, yes, affect a change in the way that we treat the, the climate. And it's it's difficult because with any kind of political system and with any like democratic system, um, it's an uphill battle and it's so easy to fall backwards and to regress and to like let progress be undone. Um, and I feel like that's the entire like Trump administration has just been undoing progress that Obama made and, and Boris Johnson right now. I don't know, I, I like to think that I have this awareness but I don't usually use my voice politically. I feel like all I can be doing is just learning and speaking um, and obviously like volunteering, donating my time and money to causes that I think are important. So um, before I leave, I just, I want to say thanks for watching. If you've watched this video, if you've made it to the end, like thanks for your attention because there is an attention economy um, and it can be really hard to navigate. And I hope that anytime that I make something, um, it's not just being made in vain. I hope it's either entertaining or educational or both or just like on the spectrum of making your life a tiny bit better um i'm not sure if i do that all the time yeah i'm not sure what else i can be doing with all my time um beyond what i've been doing so yeah i just anyway i hope you guys are okay out there thank you so much for watching i will see you very soon with another video um take care of yourselves